Welcome viewers, welcome back to Literary Goa. This is a program that looks at books and authors from Goa. Today we have with us an unusual book and an unusual author I must say, uh, whose name is Cyril Alessio Fernandez. We know Cyril in many other roles as a student activist, as an employee of the Goa shipyard. Uh, here we are talking to him as the author of a book called Justice at the Grassroots. Cyril, can you give us a gist of what this book is all about, how it came about? First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity of inviting me here and CCR TV also, you know, providing this platform to discuss my book. This book has come as a tribute to Anto Francis Fernandez, a Gauda leader who has worked in that community, in the tribal community, in trying to unite the Hindu and the Christian Gaudas. He has been a Sarpanch of Kel Kelosim Panchayat for some three terms, continuous terms, and he has done a lot of work for them in uplifting this community. For those who might not know, the Gauda community is considered to be the Aboriginal community of Goa, the first settlers of Goa. And yet their position leaves much to be desired because they are struggling to get access to education, health care, you know, jobs and uh, many of these things. So Anton Francis Fernandez, I, many of us knew him as a very active social leader involved in many roles, you know, environmental, community campaigns. And this book is a tribute to him. To him. But not See, just that, yeah. Uh, what had happened is uh, Anton Francis was someone who had predicted a lot of things that could happen uh, to the Gaudas overall. Now, when I talk of Gaudas, I am talking of Gaudas, Velips, and the Kunbis together. And in that, the, they can, can take Dangars also into that as a tribe, yeah. Dangars as a yeah. tribe. So, what has happened? Historically, these people have been marginalized by the other communities that yeah. have followed them yeah. and the government. The government, at least according to Anto Francis, has not done enough what they should have done to them. And that's how these people are today on the, uh, it, it, on the margins yeah. of society and they are in a very pathetic in situation. Economically and very otherwise, pathetic, socially yes. also. Uh, in fact, I was reading Anita Haladi's work some time back where she says that initially, uh, you know, the, these communities were pushed onto the margins literally and physically in the sense that they were on all the hilly areas. And today many of these hilly areas have been taken over for big government projects, so they are getting pushed a second time. And uh, while we may see these communities in parts of Goa, particularly there is a big belt in central Goa, uh, Tiswadi, uh, Salset, Ponda. Sometimes we don't even, they don't enter our consciousness. So I think this is virtually the first book on this community, you would say? Yes, this, uh, actually what I did was, uh, in, my, in the course of me documenting Goa's history, I was also documenting yeah. earlier. And this happened in between, when they asked me to write about it. They came, approached me, their community leaders, and said, why don't you help us, you know, in writing something about Anto Francis. So I volunteered. And that's how I documented. And then I put in the history of Goa and about them. So it's a two-in-one book. It has it focuses on Anton Francis, the leader, and it yes. focuses on the community. Yes, more on the community and beside also on Anton Francis. I don't because think there is any other book on the community in English. I have not seen anything like this in English. I, I think this could be the first one. And this has really documented their lifestyle also. I have tried to document their lifestyle also. When you say lifestyle, what do you mean? The way they live, okay. their traditions, okay. all those things. It's quite been. different no, from what we are used to in the middle completely, class. Completely, completely. Like, they, they for example? See, their religion, if you take, yeah. their religion. Now, we have bracketed them or converted them yeah. into Christianity or now some are considered as Hindus also. Yeah. But if you look at their religious uh, it's beliefs, Totally different, no? They have a mind. They, they believe in Mother Goddess. Okay. They don't have this sort of deities that we have or the statues to believe in, the gods that we have, yeah. you know. But unfortunately now, they all, the present uh, generation of these tribals will not know what was their past. They were more related to nature. Their lifestyle every day is linked to nature. They have a mind which is a cultural space. Yes, that was the way they used to express them. The mind was the center of their whole life uh, cycle I see. for cultural activities, 
plus their decision making also used to happen there. Their laws were all uh, com communal laws. The community that we talk about, the Kumnidad, the Kumnidad has come up from that uh, uh, the background. The concept of a Dazan? Dazan. Dazan, Dazan means they, ten, ten Dazan. seniors, ten or uh, ten whatever. How they would work is, it has to have the learned people, yeah. you know, Dazan. Elders. So, we call them people who have understood or have better experience of things. So they would come, congregate community in one heads, place. Community heads. Yes. And one amongst them, as a Vodil, you know, would be selected to then uh, decide uh, which way to take the decision if there is, you know. So uh, even Cyril, even their food and their health practices and all have a different approach to what we are aware of. Completely, completely. Their foods are very limited but very healthy. And that's how if you see them, they are very steady and well built. Uh, their health issues are very yeah. less. If the older ones I'm talking yeah. about are not now. Now there are other reasons for them not to have good health. That is because of the physiological areas that uh, surround them in their residence. Nashne used to be one of their main mm, greens. Millets used to be one millets. of their major. This one even now. So uh, their best food till date, which I also enjoy, is ambil. That is made out which of finger millets, nashne, nashne, ground nashne, which we today, overnight. today uh, they, they, they sour it overnight, sour it overnight yes. which today unfortunately we look down upon and it's yes. considered to be a poor man's rustic food, but yes. we don't know the health, nutrition and no, values no, no, no. of, of these yeah, things. Yeah. But you know there is uh, still an opportunity to enjoy the food of these people. If you attend any of their festivals I that see. they have, yeah, when they get the full platter of their food. But to enjoy. coming back to a more serious point, Cyril, uh, I think it's tragic that we are losing all this knowledge without even documenting it. Yeah. And when I say we, it is not only us who need to document it, but the communities themselves need to yes. be empowered yeah. to somehow. See, one is that the community has to do it, is one thing. But what about the government? Isn't it the role of the government to do it? Mm. Ultimately, we are governing them, no? Yeah. Hmm? yeah. And when, if we are governing, then we have to do justice to them. That is not happening, according to me. What is my opinion is that we have not been able to give justice to them in documenting their life, in enhancing their living conditions. Hmm. Okay, their economic conditions are poor. Their education conditions also are poor. There are now some sparks happening here and there, but there could have been better, more larger, uh, you know platform provided for them to come up educationally. What I liked a lot about your book is the photography section of it, you know, where you have culled all these amazing pictures. Uh, while we show it to our readers later, yeah. can we just describe what the pictures are all about? Because I've never seen such a good collection of pictures dealing with a community which we know so little about. So if you can yeah. just describe the no, pictures. See, you don't have to describe, you have to just look at them. Yeah. at the community yeah. and these are only visuals that you get to see in limited uh, thing. But if you look at the community, we, we don't want to look at the community, yeah. you know, they are visible everywhere yeah. in marketplaces, when you travel in a bus, yeah. you know, but we don't want to look at them. Yeah. You know, no, I agree with you. We don't acknowledge them. I agree with you, but yes. there is also the saying, Cyril, mm. that what the mind does not know, the eye does not see. Yes. Yes. So if we are not aware that these yes. are the specificities of this community, we are not even going to be noticing it yes. whereas your photographs have noticed yes. can you explain a few which uh, is your favorite there all of, of everything for me is favorite but you know there is, there is one photo which i used to always like uh, that is this lady's photograph okay. the expression okay. Okay. okay okay i really like like to see very her. natural and, but uh, strains of age and you age, know age, the, the, the beaten you know the, the mass, beaten uh, yeah, all Be mm, beaten yeah. by a tough life you, and you see this photograph yeah a woman what's a chikali it, uh, it, uh, yeah, yes, chikali hmm? what is it that the life is bent down okay instead and of being upright yeah i don't look at her, at her physical thing it's i look at the life of us hmm? bent I mean, they don't get to rise up so she is actually collecting mm -hmm. clams yeah. from this Chikali uh, bay. bay during the low tide. Low tide. Yes. Many people do it. Yes. And yeah. uh, and that's been their livelihood. livelihood. No, that's the livelihood. And we are damaging yes. it without realizing or thinking yes. what uh, happens. It what it does to our their lives. industrial activity has caused lot of damage to them. I liked yeah. a couple of these pictures, uh, particularly more than the others. One is them playing uh, this traditional tabla game. Head. Tabla, tabla head. Tabla head. Yeah. 
we don't even know what tabla khel is now what is it i was lucky that i got opportunity to play when we were small you know the we rules to play. you know the uh, rules. you have to revive but i know how to play the four sticks and to play hold it like this count the crosses i see color very colorful game and uh, these are the thing we should have documented and kept in that case i think even a goa university or goa government yeah. should have done all this secondly the gauda mand which is a cultural space yes. it is a space for them to display their culture and to take decisions how does it work it also works to display when whenever it was time for them to celebrate yeah. mand was the place where they used to all come together and then for decision making also when there were disputes or issues to be settled again that would be the place where all these things were facilitated a lot of colorful photographs of their traditional dances yes. which we not being aware of don't even see the the charm yeah, yeah. you know in that sense uh, the the uh, this this is this is zagor 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 yeah hindu zagor gauda zagor yeah, yeah. and then of course you also make the point of the cousin lands yes so the government figures say that goa has about 2000 kilometers of cousin walls yes. across the state yes now to build you know a, a wall of this dimension yes. you obviously need a whole lot of labor and skill yes so your argument is that it is the creation of the of the gauda there is no argument in that it is their creation okay okay i call it an engineering marvel and when we talk of engineering we talk of engineering from our present perspective yeah. of uh, degrees okay yeah. diplomas in engineering and all this uh, things but if you look at their uh, kazan system kazan system yeah. which they have evolved and built for us yeah that is the highest level of engineering without mm. any formal knowledge and we call them illiterate yeah today their knowledge is considered as illiterate and not meant for us for our children but if you observe the whole kazan system is based on tidal movement of our sea water in and brief it, it falls from zero sea level to 7 feet of the maximum high tide the whole tide uh, kazan system all over goa it falls within this range to put it briefly yeah. if uh, much of this land is below the sea level during high tide yes so if it was not controlled it would have been flooded every few hours of course every so, 6 hours yeah so with this elaborate system of walls yes. and uh, and uh, your Bans. sluice gates bands and sluice, sluice gates, gates. Yes. the water flow is actually controlled yes. and these areas are reclaimed to grow yes. paddy yes. or or pisciculture or whatever both here you have shown the sluice gates yes. which are another marvel of goan technology yes of course and with uh, nothing there no no mechanism no mechanism involved. it's only the tidal water which controls the movement of the gates on a one way valve on one both ways in two way and two ways yeah inwards and outwards o- opening also, and yes. closing at low tide and high tide so that's the marvel no working you know, where human intervention is not required at all so to do this book uh, serial you have traveled uh, to different parts of goa which areas uh, when i started it uh, they wanted the book immediately you know yeah. but uh, and i promised them that uh, i will need at least but a minimum one year but then i had to move around talk to them talk to all the leaders understand anto francisco i did know anto francisco to some extent because we had interacted a lot yeah together he was involved with us uh, in the meta strips agitation before that i used to document his work on the verna industrial estate yeah. it was anto francisco predicted that time that verna industrial estate is going to ruin kelosi kortali and against the promises made by the government that it is going to lead into employment opportunities yeah. he had said that none of the locals will get, get employment jobs. but all locals will be removed from there and outsiders would come and settle today whatever he had predicted is come to the t yeah this was we, we of course we'll talk about anand francis because i knew him yes. very well yes. and uh, met him many times and yes. had a lot of admiration for him but uh, which areas did you travel to get all these pictures to get all these stories the pictures as i told you earlier i was documenting goa's history yeah. okay in that i travel all over every time i get opportunities when i get free time i travel when i am researching through something i go and visit and document them with a camera with camera with a camera so but most of them i think are my mobile pictures mobile camera why not okay why not and good enough i did carry some good enough that time i had a camera which i used to carry some 
uh, and I have traveled to all remote areas wherever the Gauda community resides. Mostly their leaders. Where mostly? Kepe, Kankon. But to interview them, there are a hell lot of number of interviews I had to take, you know, to document to understand, and understand, to understand, understand the understand. complexities. Yeah. So in that time, that time I was visiting only the residences of these guys. But that was in Fatorda, Margao. I mean, Kelosi meeting his family members, Bogmalo, Vasco. Yeah. A lot of areas I had to cover. So, would you say that the problems of the community today are economic, social, cultural, linguistic, everything? Everything. 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 It's a very, you know, composite nature yeah. of problems yeah. Yeah. that they have. See, if you look at them, you know, today we have appropriated everything from them. We have appropriated their gods. Their Santeri has been converted into Shantadurga. Yeah. Okay. Their mother goddess also has been uh, shifted and today we don't even know where are the major statues that once belonged to them. Their language has been appropriated and we are now introduced some different version of Konkani. Konkani language is their original language but the Konkani that they speak is, is like and the Konkani that we are teaching our very children different. are yeah. totally different, yeah. very alien. Okay. Alien Konkani is thought, you know, to our children and to their children and the Konkani that they are accustomed to yeah. is totally different. Not to speak of their land and their educational system. Then lands. Lands yes. have been overtaken, appropriated yeah. by their Kumnidats. Their lands have been appropriated and now they have become tenants or munkars yeah. of their lands. In, uh, then, uh, because they, they are, had a different form of land ownership no, in that they sense. Are dress, codes dress codes have been appropriated. We have westernized them yeah. to some extent. Hmm? So like that, everything of theirs has been, you know, changed by us, the later settlers. Mm. Talking about Anton Francis, I knew him personally and he was an activist who was involved with many environmental, yes. social, cultural yes. movements. He was close to Matani Saldana, if yes, I'm not mistaken, yes. in those days. They worked together. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was surprised when you asked me for permission to use the photograph because although I had clicked the photograph on your cover, I, had not, I was not aware that he had passed away. Okay. He died a bit early in a road accident, I believe. Yes, at night he was in. He died in a hit and run case. Oh, he suffered out of that in hospital for a long period, and never recovered out of it. So his son actually now is in the priesthood, or his son has joined priesthood. Yes, it's a good sign. I see. Mm? Yes, I see. because he can also, like a father, mm, lead yeah. his community and other communities True. to be in a good. Christians and good human beings. Anton Francis had this vision of improving the community and doing whatever it took to do it. So, like he would focus on education, he would focus on even, he was a Sarpanch of Kelosi. Kelosi. And that village I went there, I visited for this, uh, for the release of this book, uh, that was about three, four years back. Yes, 2016. And I was pleasantly surprised of how much they've tried to, you know, really build up the place. Yes. So, in that sense, they put in a lot of effort, but probably not enough, not enough for everyone. Whatever he could do at his time, within his limitations, yeah. he has done a lot for the community then. Not only for the community, the whole. If you look at the plans that he had within the panchayat, that time Kelosi was uh, with Kortali. Now today Kelosi is a separate, separate panchayat. panchayat. That time it was Kelosi Kortali panchayat. Yeah. Yeah. So he was of Kortali. Yeah. While also doing development work of Kelosi, he was also developing Kortali. Yeah. And the vision that he had, you know, to develop Kortali, none of the present leaders have displayed the same. I see. Yes. I see. So, when when you talk about, uh, you know, the, these communities, what is the way ahead for them in your view, Cyril? No, they have to be rightfully given their place. We have to acknowledge first of all that they exist. Yeah. yeah. And that they are also human beings and they have equal rights like we have. Yeah. Hmm? And that has to be acknowledged and the place, rightful place has to be, space has to be given to them. We need to help them in employment. We need to help them in education. And when I say need to help them, it's not by giving them something. Yeah. You have to give them the right, yeah. equal, 100% opportunities. Okay. Today, for your information, there is a backlog of 3,000 jobs for ST community. Yeah. A backlog yeah. which the government is not willing to I fill. See. See. Now, see, employment is something that is the key to upliftment. Yeah. Without which you cannot go ahead. No. Yeah. 
it is the economic upliftment if you have to provide to anyone you need to give him that employ job yeah and today the government is denying the this fundamental right it is a bit ironic no because all this time you said okay they are not educated today they have got the education after yes. 50 60 years of liberation they have got education but the jobs are not today they have among them educated teachers yeah okay you have some phd scholars a few but yeah. still they have reached all the levels they have reached okay, all levels in the field of education but there are but much more is needed much more is needed push push from the government is needed yeah see in education field uh, itself there are some 300 vacancies which the government is not filling yeah see so the educated uh, gowda students will immediately get jobs if those vacancies are filled tell us about your interest in the history of goa what fascinates you why why such a deep interest i appreciate see, it i'm not <laughs> no that is uh, the history angle was by default yeah when i took up the meta strip issue meta strip was this campaign on environmental lines against his company being set up at kortali yes and i had uh, been approached there uh, to help the uh, tribal only uh, local employee who was of uh, ngsl yeah. had approached me to help them out and i was trying to look at it from the human rights perspective yeah and i knew that we needed this to help this people because the meta strip was coming in an area which was where uh, all tribal people were gauda community uh, mostly were residing there all around yeah so when that issue was you know getting hotter and hotter the government was uh, you know not accepting our arguments that right. it is going to cause environmental degradation of the environment as well as human beings so i had initiated a scientific study of the whole impact of that company that's how i brought in mr sagar dara from hyderabad to This do an environmental environmentalist campaign, yeah. to do an eia from okay. our side okay. you know the okay. government had also brought in any right. the promo- proponents but we had doubts on it so we thought let us also do another eia from our yeah. uh, on behalf of the tribal side in in that i was asked to uh, you know identify all heritage in and historical areas within a 25 km zone i see uh, yeah radius of of meta strips company so that was job given to me by this environmentalist he said you do that rest i will do I you know yeah. so i landed up going <laughs> visiting or going to the library and trying to you know see what 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 was falling within this 25 km quite a lot area. so then i started going deeper and deeper and today i am neck deep <laughs> into goa's history and i am fascinated with it It's it's, it's it is a fascinating history. You're absolutely yes. right. There's so yes. many things which you are not aware yes. of. We don't know anything. We, we don't, don't know even anything. know 5% of our, our ignorance is profound. And whatever we know is all distorted history True. that has been presented True. to us today. True. Okay. So you know everyone would like to play up certain aspects yes. of their families, their yes. their societies, their communities, no, but not today's the, Goa's history has been written by a few people. Yeah. And I think there was an ulterior motive in writing that history. and so that's why in goa's history you don't find anywhere the tribal community mentioned mm. nowhere yeah okay yeah it starts at a certain point and it doesn't talk about uh, what was there before it before it okay so i am trying to do if possible now to go into all that past and rewrite goa's history from a tribal perspective from the first man's perspective so so would you would it be right to say that you are a author by accident you didn't plan to write this book but it was thrust upon you uh, is that I right to correct you know this is my third book wow yeah the other two but are the first two are in gsl as part of my work <laughs> work, work so okay. that was part of my work I, but of course i don't mean to minimize your contribution because writing makes you think at a very deep level and yes. you've done a very interesting job in creating a book which the which on a topic which didn't exist yes. yeah. in that sense but uh, what would be your advice to young people who might want to write a book is it easy is it tough how should they go about it no the young should all write it's uh, the right time also to write there is uh, the readership available and it is important that uh, we bring these issues into the public domain we debate such issues i my book i is like uh, something i wanted uh, lot of things that i have claimed and i wanted a healthy debate to happen so many things that i have you know tried to correct from mm. the past history that has been written 
So, and I want that new writers should come up, the young breed. Uh, in that sense, I should, uh, you know, appreciate uh, Professor Alito has done something by introducing that blog, Hong Kong. Yeah. An excellent step that he has initiated. Where a whole lot of young and tribal students and yes, others, marginalized, marginalized uh, students, students, get a voice. He had, yeah, he Hong Kong, Hong Kong. He yeah, had mot motivated yeah, the blog. that blog, Hong Kong. And there have been beautiful write-ups that have come. Yeah. Okay, Voices right which up. we would have otherwise never heard. We will never get that opportunity. We don't give such opportunity to yeah. them, you know. Yeah. So that is a good beginning and we should all help and encourage. So your point is, however small, even if it's a blog, do it and yes. get started and write on something which is not covered. So e even if you can write one page, yeah. we have to write. There is one person who is doing a lot of uh, writings and that's Devidas Gaunkar. But unfortunately, the problem is that he writes in Marathi. Okay. He has written excellent I see. and he writes beautifully and being from the community he writes from his heart. Uh, today also I you know, told him, see if someone can translate that because in English it goes to a larger audience. Yeah, issues are important, you know? yes. especially from this community yes. and who are the other writers, Advocate João and uh, who are the other there writers? Is, uh, Advocate John Fernand, Joao Fernandez, John, yeah, yes, John. who also from writes. Kepe, from yes. Kepe. He is document, he is doing a very yeah. good job, he is trying to document the traditions and Konkani language also he is trying to document now, the original Konkani that they speak. See if you see Konkani, the real Konkani yeah. can be heard in Kepe, Kanakona and that Sangem belt. That Konkani yeah. and today's what Konkani yeah. we speak here yeah. are two, two poles apart. So he is trying to document it. In that way, there is Favita Dias, Favita, uh, you know, yeah. who is also Who's doing, doing her PhD or has done, yeah. I think so. So yeah, she has yeah. written well. So there are some people coming up. True. And uh, what next? After this, what are your other plans? This was a, a really surprising book and I really appreciated the way, the trouble you took to, you know, uh, package this issue, not just in terms of the serious aspects of it, but also the cultural and the, uh, you know, uh, aesthetic issues in terms of the people, their culture, their dance, so many things. What are your other oh. plans? Uh, see, my writing is more from the hum human rights perspective. If I see injustice, then I feel about it and then I try to write it here. I have now seen another issue that has, you know, come, attracted me and I am working on it. Hmm. For the last two, three months I have already started yeah. working and uh, we uh, the reader will know more about when the book emerges. Yes. Of yes. course, your human rights is a full different chapter and yes. uh, if we go into that, we would need another 30 minutes. Yes. But uh, not, I am just flagging it to remind people that Cyril is also human rights. But uh, <laughs> having said that, yeah. we really like to wind up because the clock is telling us that we are out of time. Yeah. Uh, that was Cyril Fernandez, the author of Justice at the Grassroots. Thank you so much for being here with us. Looking forward to more books from your Thank you too for giving pen. me this opportunity to come and discuss my book here. Thank you so much. Thank you for it.